Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk about not Triple H, but Hunter Hearst Helmsley, Kane and Anger Management, Cruiserweights versus the X Division, TNA, and how it got me into trouble over vacation. Will this be a good Mayhem Show? I'll think about it. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 335 back again. I am Sorgatron down here in the man cave at Mayhem Studios. Uh, with me, as usual, is Chachi of Insert Coin to Be Do- in- Insert Coin to Begin dot com. I'm still I'm still hyped up on that uh, caffeine gum you gave me earlier. Yeah, what? <laughs> at Chachi <laughs> says on the Twitters. Also with us from wait, are you? Oh, San Antonio, hey, wait, Texas. Wait, wait, hold on. Texas. Wait, 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 wait. Let me do this. Okay. I, I, I turned over a new leaf. Okay. I, I'm leaf not, turned. I'm not going to bully. He took that leaf and he turned it. You're going to be a star. I'm going to be a star. I'm not going to bully WrestleFan this week. Good. And I will stick up for WrestleFan if anyone Good. else tries to fucking bully him. Yeah. Yeah. So joining us live from San Antonio, Texas, from his dorm room. Did you make your bed? Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. It's not really in frame, but it's made. Oh, he made his bed. Hey! It's Russell hey! Fan. Hey! In this camera angle, it looks like I'm in a white room, which kind of is fitting. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show 335. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in San Antonio. And, yeah, it's time for some mayhem. Excellent. Also, returning to us from the deep, dark, dark south is DJ Lunchbox. <laughs> That's what I learned while I was in the South. I also learned what good fried chicken is, and I learned how to fuck. I am back, ladies and gentlemen, back on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And <laughs> Wait, I hold on. Time out. <laughs> time out. It took you going to the South to learn how to do that? Really? What I thought really I knew. I, I thought I already knew how to fuck, but oh, man. <laughs> The things so I is, learned. So is everything you've taught me about it wrong, and I need to just reevaluate everything? <laughs> everything I taught you is wrong. It's not all about the butt stuff. Oh. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Russell fan. I've uh, probably scarred your young little life. I'm never rebounding. And coming, and, at, and coming at us from the South and knows all about what sex is, AJ. He's. It is me. Uh, Ball, fucking diggity. Is he doing his AJ Styles? Yes, so. that's <laughs> what that was. Except it was with a tiny, a very tiny towel, which is way over there now. Coming from us from another hotel room. Uh, in the same town, in but the, yes, same town. Wait, why did you chain hotel change hotel rooms then? Because there were weird. Sh- uh, there was a Dirks Bentley concert, and there was a lot of drunk moms in town. Wait, Next question. Wait, you're in a different room <laughs> from, than last night on the hangout? No, 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 no. Same room from the hangout, but okay. the last time I was on the show was a different hotel in the same town. Oh, wow, gotcha. wow. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. well, is- there was a Dirks Bentley concert, and there was a lot of drunk moms in the area, so they um. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It needed to fall down somewhere. So they did in this hotel. So now <laughs> they're gone. And now I'm here. And then next. Excellent. Well, next. you guys, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. This is uh, uh, where we talk about things not entirely all about wrestling. Uh, but no, it is a fan podcast. This is a fun podcast. We're here to have fun with wrestling, about wrestling, talking about wrestling, all that kind of stuff. Anything anything involving it. Uh, you can find out more about us in past episodes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Of course, we're on iTunes, your Blip TV, uh, your Roku box on the Blip TV app, the Stitcher application, and anywhere else uh, you can find some uh, good old podcasts there on the interwebs, video and audio versions. Whichever one you found us in, that's fine, too. Um, you can also uh, catch us at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. We love to converse with you. we got a great open group going on on Facebook, so please join us there. You can also drop us a line to that email address. Get yeah. to it! Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com You also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or you can buy the app WMS Gold. It's available on iOS. It's a, on your I, iPad, iPhone. I bet it's better than the WWE app. Wait, hold on. What? Listen. What? 
it, Sorg is really good at saying all of that stuff. <laughs> all of it. Thank you. However, if everyone that listens to this buys the app, then we get that 45 seconds back, and we can fill it with the stuff that you send us. Yeah. Because everything is right there in the app. That's everything. right. That's right. So, go buy the app. And this bonus content. Go buy the app. 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 What? You buy that damn app, damn it. I will come and find you, and you will buy that damn app. I will make you click that buy button. Buy it! Has Sorg ever sucked the cock? So he doesn't have a cock sucking face. Oh, <laughs> that's just a little snippet of what you're missing there. That's just a little snippet of what you're missing there. Sorg, Sorg does not have a cock sucking wow. face. I don't, I don't remember posting that one. Um, and I, real, I realized last week's did not get up yet. Uh, I will I will post that tomorrow along with the gold for this week. So I apologize to those who are on the app. And we'll take care of that. Listen, so, what, yes. I just spent 45 seconds trying to convince these people to buy the app but we pay attention like well okay let's me up but, but i've noticed and i'm gonna fix it because we care about the people that have dropped the money on that thing <sighs> so, 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 so. see we, we're putting all kinds of good content i like the stuff about my cock sucking face apparently no <laughs> we don't, i must have, i must have went for water on that one don't you don't have a cock don't have a cock that was the moral of that story you do not have a cock sucking that's face. good that's good Beautiful. can that be this um. week's title <laughs> Sword's no way, I don't think face. I can put that up. No, no. Um, well, let's get right into it. We'd like to start off with our interactions. Interactions! With the fans! We have fans! Fan mail! Ah, who wants to take the first one, guys? Uh, Mr. Chachi has it. Greetings, Mayhemers! Greetings. It has been a while since I wrote in. I was hoping Riz would be fired by the time I wrote in, wrote in again. But alas, I am once again disappointed. Mm. Is anyone else getting to the point where the face palm worthy moments in WWE no longer faces you? Sheamus's be a star campaign while being a bully, jobbing out Dolph Ziggler seemingly every week, Ryback and Sin Cara receiving TV time at this point. I've gotten so used to being frustrated by the product that coincidentally, I am no longer disappointed in the product. Hmm. Maybe that was the plan all along. I'm still going to be glad to see Linda McMahon's Senate campaign crash and burn. Fuck Chloe Kardashian. I almost stumbled over that word. <laughs> Kardashian. It's like it's like Kardashians. <laughs> yeah, I, Kardashians. I try to keep that that, that name out of my vocabulary, mm. <laughs> so I get thrown off whenever. Well, I you see know it. what you replace it with. What? Who's got it? No, no sound effect. No. The, was that somebody else that was on? The, there you go. Okay. Oh, there we go. But Anthony <laughs> J. Disler. There you go. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, AJ. Two. Electric yes. Boogaloo. Exactly. Now we got a. Uh, that gonna, is. Wait, hold well, on. Well, yeah. I am changing his name. Okay. There's Bo Diggity. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be AJ. Two Electric Boogaloo. Mm -hmm. All one mm -hmm. name. That would be a sweet ass tag team. <laughs> <laughs> I would be awesome as a tag team. Just me. Just, <laughs> just me as a tag team. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> all right. I would get the hot I want to see a wrestler go into a handicap match, like crawl for the tag and then like high five himself and just get up and no sell everything. <laughs> that would have to happen. So hot tag. Yes. Self hot so, tag. Why didn't DDP ever come up with that? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Self hot tag. All right, we got another one here. Of course, we've had a great series from Big BPC uh, that that, <laughs> that has uh, involved into evolved into a multimedia experience here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, yeah. So uh, we're going to go to that. Uh, but th th okay, now he's been pretty. He has some longer emails. We, it so it's really hard for us to have uh, poor DJ Lunchbox uh, proceed throughout the entire email like that. Or I think uh, I think AJ, you picked it up last week, if I recall. Yes, um, it's a long email. Well, he did send us three separate emails this week. So we're going to have you guys tag in from email to email or wherever you guys want to. All right. OK. OK. All right. Uh, who wants to start off? DJ Lunchbox? I'll, I'll kick it off here. OK, let Let's me go ahead and get started. And I'll cue up the music here. It's hello, hello. I am a uh, big PPC. Hello. All right. 
Hey, Mayhem Crew! It's me, it's me, it's Big PPC! <laughs> I recently purchased the new at WWE app, which is free and is also a distraction for the app. I am talking about the Gold Mayhem Show app. Buy it. Very, <laughs> buy it. Very convenient way to listen to audio of all the shows. Great. Keep up good work on show and on the Gold portion as well. How many Raw Google was pretty does the uneventful. Mayhem show app In talk, fact, <laughs> what was that? How many how many rubles does the <laughs> is the, is our app cost? That's a good question. It's a good I'm question. I'm going to go find out. Okay. Continue. <laughs> In fact, with the big stories of the week being Triple H being game over, CM Punk <laughs> and Jerry Lawler feud slash match is fucking dumb. Lawler <laughs> clearly should not beat Punk or Miz or any other current legitimate su- superstar. And has had any of the current titles or belts in the last decade. Jerry Lawler is a hall is mm. Jerry Lawler <laughs> is Hall of Famer, but does he need to be involved in in ring matches with all of the talent on sidelines? Fuck no. Lawler equals commentator. Period. So Triple H is leaving the door open for him to think about coming back instead of retirement. Whatever. Triple H <laughs> is not a super beloved character. He is married to Stephanie for fuck's sake, so he's not going anywhere. Stick around all you want, Triple H, but <laughs> you don't need to wrestle permanently or part-time. Game fucking over. And I'm going to go ahead and tag out. Hot tag. Did not mean to send off email yet, so more of the email to come. More raw. Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandown. Wow, what a tag team fucking brilliant. Damian Sandown and Coney don't need to team up, but neither does Brodus and Sinkara. Basically, it is the best random tag team match against the dumbest tag team. Brodus and Sinkara have no chemistry and have to be worst babyface team known to man. So let's put our truth in a match with D. Bryan, since he is tag champ with Kofi, instead of, you know, having a tag match with champs, let's put random teams together. Ugh, makes me sick. I will send more later. Did, did he ever send more later? Yes. Yes, he did. Okay. He did okay. send more later. Oh, by the way, uh, our app costs uh, 63 uh, rubles and 73 ruble cents. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, ruble cents. Maybe it's a rublet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the I don't know what the, the the change is for a ruble. I don't know like <laughs> uh, do I get like four quarter rubles? I don't know how that works. <laughs> Russians fix this for me, please. If you're Russian, email us at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com and tell us what a ruble cent really is. I, I, I actually have a friend in Moscow. Maybe I'll reach out to him. Well, yes, you should. Yes. What is ruble cent? What is the ruble mm-hmm. cent? <laughs> All right, a minor, oh, a minor unit is a kopeck, so it's sixty-three rubles and seventy-three kopecks. Oh, that makes sense then. Oh, there you go. All right, tag in. AJ, do you have do you have the the next part of the email? Uh, no. Uh, I'll, oh, for, okay. I'll forward it to him. Tag in. Okay. Is it longer? I'll, I'll do. Yes. Yes. Oh, What's okay. happening? Yeah, yeah. It is uh, like ten Forward paragraphs long. long. Go saying, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sending it over What's, to him. Okay, all right. The whole ha. What? The, sorry. The whole De Bryan anger management thing is funny, I guess, if you think sitting around in a circle jerk with a bunch of homos who happen to all court have a problem. I think that the biggest problem is someone is unaware that no one really cares about Kane. He had anger issues for years, from electrifying penises to setting chair on fire. I don't think Debra is the problem here, huh? Well, let's just say they both have problems and move on. Kane should not win anything. Swagger doesn't deserve to get squashed by Brooke Black Mountain or Ryback. He is impressive, impressively dangerous. Motherfucker almost back body dropped swagger on top of his head. Somebody boo this man. Boo. <laughs> Much better. Sorry. Speaking of no wonder that no one wants to be in the ring with Ryback, he is going to hurt someone if he can't figure out what control is. 
Anger management for Ryback, not Daniel Bryan. Pink eye hurts like bitch. Someone call the doctor. He has got some shit on his shit. Eh? What? <laughs> <laughs> He's got some shit on his shit. Some shit? (laughs) Show title. Verbatim. Uh, These are all verbatim. (laughs) This this is exactly what it is. I'm reading it as well, and (laughs) these are word for word, kids. Kane is the worst commentator ever. (laughs) Uh, That was supposed to be in the comic book guy voice. Uh, Let's see if I can do it. Where's... Like a yeah. Russian comic book guy voice? Like, you're going to mix worst. them together? Hold on, I got it, I got it, I got it, right? Ken yeah. is worst commentator ever. <laughs> he did it! <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty fucking good. Grand champion right here. That is all. That is all. AJ, go. So, Santino and his Slater match reminded me of the new WWE 13 game. So if they have his Slater on the game, I would have kicked Santino while doing that Gouchard Jimmy chant as I kicked the shit out of the Milan minstrosity. It looked like fun. I would have been the victor, not the lame puppet wearing ass Italian fruitcake eating cock slobbing horrible excuse for what a wrestler should be. <laughs> all, these, all these insults sound a million times better in a Russian accent. <laughs> okay, I feel better now. <laughs> Ziggler and Del Rio versus Sheamus and RKO. This seems like a deadly long main event for SmackDown, but on Raw. Horror holla, players. We are going to have a tag team match. <laughs> Orton should be punished for pulling Jeff Hardy. He will remain a mid-card superstar and should not get any title anytime soon. He is popular, so really he will probably not be a heel, which is what he is good at because people like his music and his snake bullshit. <laughs> this is great for me to poop on. <laughs> oh, now he's playing to our accents. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't put yeah. on yeah. Orton equals terrible fucking snake. Sheamus is the only winner. Ziggler and Del Rio are both great. Del Rio has had too many shots at Sheamus for the title, in my opinion. Ziggler also seems to be a little trigger happy with the briefcase. Maybe have Ziggler feud with lame Orton instead of same old, same old. So TNA, I think, is putting on great shows, but Aces and Aids Brawl with Impact Wrestlers was dumb. I hope they can make this entertaining. Good luck with that, sucker! <laughs> so Kane is wow. a good guy, I guess. He is also Broski of the Week. Woo, woo, woo. You know it, bro. Who is your favorite X Division or Cruiserweight wrestler? P.D. Williams from TNA is mine, and WWE, I've always enjoyed Jamie Nook. Who is your favorite stable or faction of all time? I like the Nation of Domination with Owen, Rock, D'Lo, Godfather, and Ron Simmons, and Radicals with Benoit, Eddie Saturn, and Malenko. Till next week, Mayhem Crew. It's me. It's, it's me. me. It's me. It's Big, it's P- big PPC. Nice, nice tag team at the end there. Um, <laughs> all right, to the questions. Thanks, uh, thanks, Big PPC. Um, uh, 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 Doomsday Device with the finish there. What's that? That was full. Do- that was full doomsday device with the finish. Definitely, definitely. All right, first yeah, question. Yeah. Let's hit this quick here. Uh, what's your favorite X division and cruiserweight guys uh, from the respective? I think if you go cruiserweight, let's um, mm, let's let's say you can say WWE slash WCW. Does that make sense? Yeah, if you want. Okay, let, let's, just, let's just combine those for sake of argument, since it's really kind of the same carryover there. Um, let's go. Go ahead there, uh, Russell fan. Uh, I'll, I'll go with the WWE. It wasn't WCW, but one that I think sticks out in my mind. I was always a fan of Tajiri for some reason. Mm, That's one that really yes, stuck out to yes, me. Yes, yes. Dude's foot man. I always thought that dude was amazing. Um, him, and if you want to go TNA, um, I'll say P.D. Williams. But on a uh, consolation prize, uh, Elo Skipper, because what the fuck is he doing nowadays? Where yeah, the fuck is that guy? Yeah, yeah. How about you, LB? Uh. Pfft. Cruiserweight, I was always a big fan of Crash Holly for obvious reasons. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm with Wrestle fan. I love Tajiri. Um, as far as X Division guys, Samoa Joe, hands down. Okay. Uh, what about you there, AJ? Uh, WCW, Dean Malenko, game over. Any Dean Malenko <laughs> match, I would oh, yeah. watch Dean Malenko do holds for an hour. That's a guarantee. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, X Division, 
I have to go with uh, with AJ Styles before he got into the whole the heavyweight scene. Yeah, when, it, when he was doing all the X division matches, that's what got me to watch TNA for a while. Was just waiting for an X division match, and they were doing the X division matches. And in case in point, uh, in case anybody thinks that cruiserweight wrestling is over, um, watch how excited we get right before, during, and right after Destination X, and yeah. then we hate TNA again for another three hundred and you know fifty days. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But the week before the week of. And the week after TNA Destination X, completely different story. And it's awesome. All right. What about you, Chaji? Uh, as far as X Division, I have to agree with AJ. Um, they're Bo Diggity. Uh, AJ Styles slash Christopher Daniels, back when they were all X Division and not uh, main eventing heavyweight type situation. Because, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, like he said, that's what got me into watching TNA to begin with was that division. Mm-hmm. And when they were in that division, that in the six sided ring. And as far as um, cruiserweight slash light heavyweight division, I would have to um, go with uh, Tajiri, um, Malenko, or Kidman. Mm. Kidman, oh, I didn't think Storm. about Kidman. Lance Storm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, like Jericho. You like got, WCW Jericho? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, actually, I, I'm seeing in the chat room, it reminded me of old, old school Jericho. Yeah, I, I have to go with uh, Cruiserweight Jericho in WCW. Um, and and huh. the, w, the WC, or WWE got rid of the light heavyweight title, which was the Cruiserweight title in, w, in WCW. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Only because they uh, had such a stacked roster yeah. for feuds. They had Ultimo Guerrero, Eddie Guerrero, you had Ch- even Chavo was back there. He mm-hmm. was like Chavo was the jobber in that group, mm-hmm. which was unbelievable because Chavo was actually a really good wrestler. Mm-hmm. But he was Sato. overshadowed by by Eddie being there. He was young. He was young and green back then. So yeah, yeah. Two, uh, and he came out on a pony. Yeah, Pepe. Oh, God, that that whole Pepe. thing was what got me to flip channels to WCW Monday Nitro because mm-hmm. I didn't care mm-hmm. about the NWO. Like, exactly. I just disliked it. It was like, okay, get it. I get it. You have a very dominant faction. You had Ultimate Dragon coming in with all those belts. You had all those Japanese guys. Jushin Liger would have a match every once in a while. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was tremendous. And plus, all, all the luchadors. I mean, it, it, La Parka. Like, we were we were huge fans of La Parka. And he became the chairman of the WCW because oh, he, he used to use the chair. He'd get up on a chair and dance on it. That was the best. Um, X Division, I got to so, I gotta say, and, and this is uh, DJ Lunchbox's fault for me getting into this guy, uh, Samoa Joe. Yes. Hey, hey! Remember when the X Division matches main evented the pay per views? Because it was Samoa Joe against AJ Styles, See, Christopher never, Daniels. You know, I never got oh, those into. Were incredible. I, I'm sorry, I never got into Samoa Joe being X Division. Champion. But that's back when it was like it was more like no weight limits, it's no limits yeah, kind of thing. I, I, I know, but, but those were the best matches because he doesn't look like he belongs. I know, and don't get me wrong, Samoa Joe is an amazing wrestler, and yeah. I like him. Yeah. However, when I think X, X I, I equate X Division to like the Little cruiserweight, yeah, title. exactly. Because I mean, that was the relation so, that it was like that yeah. it was like the X Games was mm-hmm. why they kind of came up with that. So, yeah. Yeah. so I, 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 I never, can see why there's that correlation. I never like I never got into Samoa Joe being X Division champion, even though I saw him as X Division champion. It was just the the little guys are the ones that. I still really think the be- the last great uh, uh, this is a tangent, but the last great uh, feud I saw Kurt Angle in was against Samoa Joe. Really? Yep. I mean, it, yeah. Um, all right. The yeah. other, what was the other question? Uh, favorite faction? Um, I love the DX, like the the post. I, this is probably just because of when I got into it, but I, I enjoyed the uh, you know the Triple H, uh, New Age Outlaws uh, DX that period uh, for some reason. So mm. I don't know. It, it's just I don't know, for me. That, that's what sticks out for me. Uh, what about you, Russell fan? Um, and I think like like what you're saying. Like when I had started getting into wrestling, I think one that stuck out to me the most probably Evolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because I let, they they had that mentality of being you know the well you know the guys that thought they were better than everyone else they would come out with the suits and the jets and the you know um, you know w- with all these women and stuff like that and it was you know and it was an interesting dynamic how you know that sort of elevated guys like randy orton and batista by being under triple h and Ric flair very well done. Um, i think that was the I, best I thought part it was a really interesting it. combination yeah the best part about evolution was the fact that you had a guy like flair at the top you had a long-term guy like triple h 
Then you had Batista and Orton, who were two young, good wrestlers who were coming up in the ranks. That's what made that whole faction like better than just a normal faction. Like it was better than like you know, the Four Horsemen's being uh, mentioned in the chat room. It's it was better than because Four Horsemen's had some really bad iterations where they've had like Sid Vicious, Lex Luger, Mongo, McNamichael in it. You know, yeah. Um, I mean, it was just like oh, let's let's throw together another thing and call it the Horsemen. Flair's here, right? Um, That's true. But I was like the, the Horsemen were all the same guys, really. It's sort of same mm. build of sorts. Okay. Uh, I like the fact that you know you had Triple H, the top guy, Ric Flair, who was the mind that it, the guy that's been there for so long that had all this knowledge. Batista was the muscle. Uh, Randy Orton was the young upstart. Mm. You know, I think that was what made it so good. Was you had that variety in the stable. Yeah, Zero's dead on in the in the chat room. By the way, Evolution was more or less a new version of the Horsemen. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, what about you, LB? Um, well, I I actually am going to go with the Horsemen. The the old original Horsemen where like Flair had his hair all feathered and shit and he they would the promos that they would cut would just fucking blow your mind back when they mm-hmm. like were first together and they were feuding with the uh, uh fucking um Dusty Rhodes. Right. Oh my god, that shit was incredible. I agree. The the iterations after that it did go downhill. Who the fuck is Mongo McMichael? Paul fuck Roma? him and Paul Lex Roma? Luger. But mm. um but yeah, that first iteration of the the Four Horsemen just loved it. Excellent, excellent. Well, AJ, I don't know if you already said yours in conversation here. It's it's there's one, there's only. Yeah, there you go. Four, Four Horsemen. Horsemen. The the best. I will say this. Lunchbox is absolutely correct. Dear aspiring wrestlers, Google Ric Flair old promos, and just start <laughs> taking notes. Mm-hmm. The guy didn't mm-hmm. have a bad promo. The fact that you can sample Ric Flair promos in rap songs now, and <laughs> everybody goes, "That is the shit." Go just Google Ric Flair push a T, and you will get one of the best Ric Flair promos ever. Where he starts talking, he starts stomping his feet and saying he's having a hard time holding the alligators down. It's the best line ever in any promo <laughs> of all time. I don't care what promo you're talking about. Yep. <laughs> all right, what about you, uh, Josh? Um. I would have to say I, I have a few. Um, right to censor, as right to censor was pretty awesome. In the, in nice, the nice. I, I was always a fan of that. Um, all the different stuff, like head cheese, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and that was technically a, a tag team, still, but still, still, they had three people. One was in a cheese suit, right? <laughs> um, Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, with, I'm with you. De- Dean uh, Benoit Flair was like that. That's that's my horseman when I got into W. Uh, yeah, and Anderson, WCW. And, uh, Anderson. It was like, oh, that's oh. that was the best setup for them. Legacy. I'm sorry. Say what you want, but I liked Legacy. Legacy was good. That was the new kind of evolution esque thing. I it loved. was. I, I it loved. was good for a while. It lasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It and was, and it gave you hope for a new generation of superstars. We got Cody Rhodes now. Right, we got it, Cody Rhodes least. out of it. Yeah. At, at the least. problem is the problem with with Legacy, they never had the mouthpiece. No, the problem the Legacy had sure. Orton, had Rhodes, and had DiBiase. Had they had a mouthpiece like a flare, game over. Legacy'd still be around right now. Real quick yeah. from the chat room, I want to hit up. Uh, the, 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 we have uh, we have the, the Dean like a flare. Two man power trip, uh, Triple H and uh, Stone Cold that one time. Dudley Family was awesome on their ECW time. Uh, Zero Mad Mike, respectively. Uh, that's backwards. Nation of Domination from Bobby. Um, a YouTube link. The Oddities Rail. just got brought up with Bobby, <laughs> with <laughs> with or without ICP. Um, uh, all Mad right. Mike drops Raven's flock. <laughs> yes. So oh yeah, yeah. They were talking yeah. about it earlier remember, right here. Speaking Mega of the powers. oddities, I remember like because I would go to Hollywood videos like and buy like old or rent old like oh. VHS tapes of like Royal Rumbles and from that era. Mm-hmm. It was Royal Rumble '99, I think, and I was it was the whole Steve Austin Vince McMahon thing, and they were doing their thing, and there was kind of cool. And then I think like number three was Golga, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> That's my experience with the oddities. Uh, Mad Mike, it's underrated, but. Uh, the triple threat in ECW, he says. So, not the triple threat from WCW. Oh, yeah. Wait, what, what's, uh, did you have something, Chad? Yeah, and I lost it. Uh, from that era? Shit. 
What was the Joel. original Kai and Tai? Like when there there was a bunch of them. There wasn't just the, the Job Squad. Like job Shoku. Squad. There the you job go. Squad. Also, job Bob Squad. Bob. All right, real quick. I want to get to this. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> Ran into this guy at the booth, the Sorgatron Media booth at IWC this past weekend. Uh, he was also apparently had stopped by uh, around our area at the Steel City Con. Uh, but he he left me this video. His, his uh, Twitter name, if you want to check him out, is uh... hmm. How do I say his name? <laughs> who is good? Who Sant Cox? W H O S A N T C O X is his Twitter name. If you want to check that out, but. Uh, he ran into Virgil uh, on the bus on the way to Steel City Con and uh, to dispel a rumor. And, uh, and, 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 and well, here you go. Guys, I'm here with Virgil, former WWE superstar, million dollar man. Have. There's somebody on Twitter claiming that they're him. Virgil, let them know. Man, I don't even know how to tweet. I was never on Twitter in my life. I don't even have a cell phone. Okay, so I'm very happy that all these people are following, and um, I wish I knew how to tweet that. I would like to talk to all the different fans, you know what I mean? But that's not me. I mean, so who's ever being a possible? I'm right here with Anthony, all the way to Robinson, and he said, man, I tweeted you. You never tweeted me back. I said, what's that? I, I see that Dallas Page thought that was me on there. Is that, if I do Dallas Page? was there. I would tweet Dallas back. Dallas was one of my friends. Roddy Pipe was one of my friends. I would tweet him back immediately. Okay, so that was the thing. Uh, I hope that I can learn this tweet so I can be talking. So there you go. Uh, hey, yeah, Anthony. <laughs> quick, uh, question, quick question. Yes, yes. D does Virgil remind you like a, of a less impressive version of Freight Train? Just in his, and I'm not saying, but in, like in his speech, I was like, that mm. sounds like Freight Train. <laughs> um, he reminds me a lot of um, a guy, uh, Virgil. He reminds me of Virgil, is who he reminds <laughs> me of. <laughs> there is yes, no others. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there, there's an uh, ad official Virgil apparently out on Twitter that's purporting to be him. I guess DDP actually like responded to him sometime or some, at some point here. So uh, yeah, because I, I remember, I actually remember Virgil amongst the many conversations we had that weekend saying about how, yeah, this guy uh, was talking to me on the bus, so asking about if I had a Twitter. I don't have a Twitter and all this stuff. And it was like, it's like, all right, okay. Um, yeah, so we got it. there it is. There's no Virgil. I ain't, I ain't no Twitter. Um, so yeah, I, I promised him because hey, apparently he's tried putting this to uh, a lot of the news sites to help dispel the rumor or whatnot. Uh, and and <laughs> never, they won't take cared. it for some reason. And uh, and we 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 will we will play it because they didn't make it up. Fuck their sheets. Hey, <laughs> exactly. Riz wants to know. Fuck you, Wrestling is. Observer Mayhem Show exclusive. Exclusive. Sorry, exclusive, 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 exclusive. <laughs> What's that? Riz wants to know what the score is. Oh, <laughs> 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 thanks. Uh, well, I'll tell you what time it is. It's time for mm -hmm. no. No, is there one more? Yeah, there's, there's one more. There's email. another email? Yeah. Holy what? shit. Oh, that one. Yes, you're right. Who's got this one? I do. All right, go for it. And this started a chain, but... um, It did a little bit. <laughs> hey, Mayhem crew. I know I promised to leave a voicemail last week. Didn't happen. Not going to happen this week either. Life keeps getting in the way, but mark my words. I will one day leave a voicemail for the WMS crew. Not only because I idolize Bo Diggity... <laughs> But also because I have set a personal goal for myself to become a Wrestling Mayhem Show Grand Slam fan. Which is a, a self-invented title that we're going to steal now. <laughs> that we're going to completely go with. Yep. Uh, interacting with the WMS crew in every possible way. Chat room. Done. Google Plus. Done. Twitter. Done. Facebook. Done. Email. Obviously Done. What's left for me to accomplish as a WMS fan than leave a voicemail and have it played for all of the internet to hear? I will become a Grand Slam fan. Certainly not the first, but a worthy personal goal nonetheless. Thanks for the time. Please continue now with your awesomeness. Your friend in the mainstream media, Matt Carlins. And uh, okay. you can find him on Twitter at 50 Matches or at Matt Carlins. There you go. There you go. Uh, and to which uh, there was an email back from Bobby. It says you need to include Tout now in the Grand Slam. 
Um, no, we don't. No. And, and apparently no, smoke don't. signals. Um, so there you <laughs> go. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, excellent. Now, is that it? Is that it? That was a lot of email. It was a lot of email. Wrestle <laughs> fan, tell us what's hold going on. 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 Can, what, can I give uh, a good intro here? All right. All right. Can I give? Can I give a? Let me. Let me. Let me work this one up here, kids. Okay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Time for you to hear the news. The news about high school gyms. The news about armories. It is time for your favorite segment. Brought to you by the one and only Wrestle Fan. This is Amateur Falling Down. Go. Hey, there we go. Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about this week on the Indie Minute is the uh, good folks at Sorgatron Media were at a little event this weekend uh, in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania for Cage Fury. Uh, I know Sorg uh, was uh, at that event, so uh, I know. Uh, hopefully, he has a lot to say about it. <laughs> hopefully, I do. What? Yes. Oh, it <laughs> yes. Was, well, it was a fun show. Uh, one, I, I Hold think. On. What? 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 Hold on. What? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to interrupt your segment, Russell Fan. Let me apologize for that. However, I have breaking news. Big PPC is in the chat room. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes, he is. There Continue. he is. Continue. All right. Sorry, I, that had to be pointed out. Oh, uh, right C- now. Cage Fury. We attended Cage Fury. Oh, dude, you were there amazing. for Cage Fury. It was a good show. Yeah. Um, it was honestly some of the best. Uh, cage matches I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, for uh, uh, it being an indie show, they were on par with a lot of the uh, the the mainstream cage matches. Honestly, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and I, I I watched I watched uh, one of the smallest guys in IWC take a table bump that would shame some of the table bumps that they've done in WWE mm-hmm. with a table that they literally pulled out of the box before the show. <laughs> out of the box. <laughs> but yeah, and, and uh, it was a good line of matches beforehand. It, 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 it did, definitely didn't feel too bad for being a six-match first half uh, since they had the offset because they have to set up the cage at intermission. Um, but it, it, was a, it was a really fun show. Uh, the weapons match between Facade and uh, Gory was interesting. Yeah. So some... Uh, it, it, there, there, there was Freddy Claus. Freddy Krueger Claus were used. Well, uh, both both guys adjusted <laughs> wow. their... Uh, that is the, side note, that is the second indie show that I know of that has used Freddy Claus. Side note, but go ahead. Uh, uh, both both combatants uh, adjusted their, their intros and uh, a little bit of what they do for this particular match. Mm-hmm. Um, Facade usually had a little bit of a Go Ninja Go before his is no no that turns into Go Ninja Go. Well, it, well he, this week or this show he came out with uh, Karate Kid, um, the Cobra Kai dojo. Uh, fear does not exist in this dojo. There's no fear in this dojo. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yes, yes. And then it went into his music, and uh, Gory just changed everything. Mm-hmm. Um, he found this awesome music that was a. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street remix, and he came out with a uh, Freddy colored pants and hat and uh, mm-hmm. the claw. Yeah, he, he actually debuted wow. this uh, last week at, uh, and there's a little bit of picture on the front page, I didn't see wrestling.com. He actually debuted this outfit last week at, uh, at Resolution uh, for the casket match with Facade. Um, so, yeah, and uh, we have some great looking stuff backstage we, we did with it too. Uh, so yeah, pretty pretty cool homage. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but uh, Gory does also have a uh, Freddy Krueger tattoo on his arm. So I never, oh, I never noticed that. I was staring yeah. at it while he's like sitting there in the whole getup and everything. So yeah, I've never noticed so yeah, that. yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It was definitely something different, and uh, and uh, uh, it, was, it was it was great for being like. And this was the main event. Like the facade, Gory was the main event of the night. Weapons match. Yeah, uh, no, it, Shula McChesney was tremendous. Oh, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what, straight up and down, both both matches were mm-hmm. uh, some of the best. What do you think? Uh, Sammy Callahan Callahan defended the indie title, uh, super indie title against uh, uh, Rich Swan from uh, Dragon Gate. I am highly disappointed. Why? Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, no, no, not in the match. The match was great. Yes. I mean, uh, the match was amazing. Were you a fan of the Kentucky Fried uh, Cutter? Oh, man. Like, you wouldn't <laughs> believe. Hold on. Just look up the Kentucky Fried Cutter and Rich Swan. Um, uh, JP, who helps us, um, he, he told me that Rich Swan does a standing 450. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, 450 splash. And I was really, really hoping to get to see that live. And no, he, he didn't. No, he he's didn't coming back. Do it. He is coming back for for uh, at least Rich one more Swan show. Or Rich Swan, Rich Swan, Rich Swan with an H. And but I want to see if I can find a YouTube of this. Uh, there is, and it, it, yeah, I've, I found I've seen one. The standing 450 before. There you go. Here, back. here he is he bouncing. J- Boom! He jumps like it's a trip. One, <laughs> two, wee! There he is. That looks like it's in CZW. <laughs> So uh, yeah, yeah. They, 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 I, they, I feel like I feel like IWC is like harkening back to the days that we were really interested in it, where you're getting these guys pop up from other groups. Like somebody from Dragon Gate was here this time. Chuck Taylor was there from from Chikara. Like not like stuff that's on TV for the most part, but still, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, sampling of other indies yeah. that make this yeah. feel bigger. Big, you know, we get to experience something that's not just everybody here. I mean, Sammy's real big on the East Coast with like with like a CZW and a bunch of those other ones, uh, of course. And he's I know he has a little bit of a Ring of Honor. Um, it, it, it's a it's a good it's good montage of people, you know. Um, a lot of new faces came in for the first time from Proving Grounds. Uh, I thought there was some really good stuff there. Um, uh, uh, Ray Rowe, Dalton Castle was a really good match. Oh, that match that was, was amazing. That turned out really good. I, I, uh, and no offense to both guys, I just didn't expect that type of match mm-hmm. because of who it was. Mm-hmm. But they did an amazing job in that they, match. They got into a suplex off at yeah. one point. And there's actually a caption contest I started on on, the, on uh, the Facebook group for IWC uh, with, with one of the shots from there, which was a great job by Chachi. Uh, Chachi is getting so good at doing ringside. I don't know. We we were you were on that night, man. And uh, here here's here's that shot right here. It's a great caption of uh, Ray Rowe uh, sneaking up on uh, Dalton Castle there. Uh, so, but Don Castle gets the win, gets the the number one contender spot. So the mayhem bump is intact. Mayhem, so mayhem show bump is in, is intact. So he gets to face Logan Shula when they come back to Elizabeth PA, Elizabeth PA in I think October for no excuses. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and uh, and keep an eye. Out. I'm, I'm sure he's going to have a, 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 a sisterhood of the traveling tights up uh, with a little bit of his highlights and his angle from uh, IWC Cage Fury as well as as he seems to do. Uh, I'm sure he's going to continue with that. So uh, go check it out. The DVD, there's a teaser already. You're going to see it here at the break if you're on the video version. Uh, but you can go check it out. It's available right now. SorgatronMedia.com slash store. And uh, those first batch of DVDs will be sending out by the end of this week. So, so Buy yeah. the DVD. I, I, I hate to be like kind of shilling, but it, like we're still fans of it. We're watching this like through our lenses, through our, our switches and everything as fans. You know, oh, right. you should hear I mean, us. We're, we're just having a blast. I mean, I, yeah. you hear me yelling on the headset all night. Like, holy shit, did that just happen? Yeah, yeah you should hear <laughs> us on the headset. Because uh, we're still making smart-ass comments. Yeah, we're, uh, we, we, are, we are completely still watching this as fans as we're working. Like, this really is, like, the greatest job, yeah. you know? And, and, and we, we want, like, we are looking for this stuff and love to see this stuff happen and, and want to get it captured on camera so everybody else can. Because, uh, you know, we, we've all bought crappy indie dvds where nobody knows what the fuck they're doing you know and uh, uh i would just like to point out since the chat room is just now seeing it mm-hmm. that that dalton castle ray Rose shot is all me <laughs> it was yeah. it was i saw that john i'm like fucking mark that shit we're <laughs> using that somewhere um but yeah go check that out sorgatronmedia.com iwcwrestling.com and their next show is going to be in newell west virginia zima ion is going to be back in his hometown uh, for uh, Mountain Estate Madness 3. It's going to be in the, at the end of the month. Like it's, I think it's a September 30th show. So go check that out for sure. Uh, what else is going on in the indie world there, Russell fan? Uh, uh, what else is going on in the indie world? Uh, I'm going to talk about something that uh, a company we don't talk a lot about, but they have a big event coming up this coming weekend, and that's Pro Wrestling Gorilla down in uh, the California <laughs> area. Uh, September 1st and 2nd, they are holding their uh, big event, the Battle of Los Angeles. It's their annual tournament that they hold uh, with a lot of great indie talent that they have there every year. Um, some of the names, Kevin Steen, El Generico, Davey Richards, uh, and a bunch of great local talent from the ca- uh, California area will also be participating. It's a two-night tournament. Uh, if you want to go check that out, you can get your tickets at ProWrestlingGorilla.com. 
Uh, it's in Reseda, California. Uh, if you de- if you want to go check them out, I definitely highly recommend it. I I highly enjoy uh, Pro Wrestling Gorilla for the stuff that they put out, and it's really really amazing stuff. And the Battle of Los Angeles is their biggest event uh, the entire year, so I would highly recommend that. Uh, so, like I said, go to prowrestlinggorilla.com. To Wrestle check fan them. cannot highly recommend that enough. Is what he's trying Not to say. Not enough. It's. Re- I, I actually have some old uh, some old tapes from those uh, past events that I do want to watch soon. Um, but yeah, definitely go check them out. And uh, show this them high us. recommendation comes highly recommended. Then <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell them the Wrestling Mayhem show sent to you. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the stuff going on down here in Texas, and that's for uh, Anarchy Championship Wrestling. First, uh, interesting uh, note is that coming soon, uh, they're uh, soon to be releasing the DVD for their big pro wrestling prom event that they held back in the month of May. Um, you can uh, buy the DVD, the DVD in a variant cover that's uh, for twenty dollars. But uh, soon enough on Smart Mark Video and on Smart Mark Video on Demand, you can get the uh, DVD for $15. Um, go check it out. That was an amazing event. I was there live. It was amazing to be a part of. And from what it seems, the DVD looks to be absolutely amazing. Uh, go check out Anarchy Championship Wrestling. They're going to... Uh, it's definitely a DVD to pick up. Uh, I, I, also like, I also like to see that I'm not the only one using odd filters on the teasers this month. Yeah, that, they released the uh, DVD menu uh, for uh, that event, which is it looks really amazing. Oh, is that what this is? I'm sorry. Is that what this video is? The, this it's, is it's, it's the uh, yeah the DVD menu for the nice. uh, for the event. Uh, so it's very cool. Definitely check them out. AnarchyChampionshipWrestling.com. Their next event is September 16th uh, at the Mohawk in Austin, Texas, where the main event will be Jerry Lynn continuing his retirement tour, taking on Robert Evans in a Lone Star Classic qualifying match, uh, preparing for the Lone Star Classic tournament that's going to be happening in November. Um, so go check them out, AnarchyChampionshipWrestling.com, and uh, go support them. Go support a great uh, Texas indie wrestling company. Uh, and the final note I want to make is something I wanted to discuss. Uh, I know for those that follow me on Twitter at the Russell fan uh, this past Saturday, uh, for those obviously, like we mentioned before, I moved in back to my dorm room in San Antonio on Friday, um, Saturday, Yay. which means, which means uh, Saturday uh, I had some free time and I woke up kind of early. So I was like, Oh, you know what? I'm going to watch ring of honor. Uh, and I decided to live tweet it too, to get my thoughts on it. Uh, and I, it's a, it's a, I think there's a lot of good and there's a lot of stuff that could be approved uh, that I kind of wanted to talk about. Okay. Um, I do. I I really enjoy Ring of Honor just from the fact that I do get to see a lot of talents that Mm -hmm. you know wouldn't have gotten TV time otherwise if they weren't in the big two. Um, There was some really. There was honestly some really great wrestling. All of rest. There very talented wrestlers that are there. Uh, there was a tag team match between the Young Bucks and uh, Cedric Alexander and Caprice Coleman. That was really good. It was part of their tag team title tournament. Uh, that I would uh, really encourage people watching because it was phenomenal stuff and uh, it really shows some of the best of Ring of Honor and what definitely they um, are about. The Young Bucks uh, are really good, yeah. yeah. Really, really, really impressive. Some may remember them as uh, Generation Me on TNA. True, and I love the I love the heel stuff they're doing in Ring of Honor. It's really they're really good to show a lot of personality, oh. and it was really good. Um, and some people have I do find um, one of the problems I do find as I. I feel like they are going they are trying to go sort of a more old school route um and it's in a, in a way can work but in another way it's sort of very odd in a sense like some of the watching some of the stuff um kind of i feel like it's sort of the same problems we have with nwa that we've been talking about mm-hmm. um for the for ex- one of the examples i saw uh at the beginning of the show they did a, a recap of what happened last week which was a main event match between rhino and eddie edwards um an anything goes match hardcore match uh to crown the number one contender uh they did a thing and uh truth martini comes out to distract eddie edwards and rhino gores eddie edwards through a table that was set up in the corner which you know, you know, we for those that don't know, Rhino uh, kind of does that a lot. Um, <laughs> kind you know, of breaks sort of rings sometimes. Uh, so yeah, um, the thing I find it odd though was uh, he gores uh, Eddie Edwards to the table, and as soon as he does it, the ref calls for the bell uh, and deems Rhino the winner due to ref stoppage uh, because I guess Eddie Edwards is, was injured or something. That part was sort of like what? Because <laughs> I mean, like. For something that we've seen so many times before, it's like why you know why couldn't he at least pin them? You know, yeah. In yeah. a sense, um, I think they tried to. I I get what they were trying to do, but in the same sense, 
you know, with the business in general, I think people are saturated a lot. And from what we've seen in the past that it's, you know, you can't sort of like go immediately back to the old school level. Um, and I think that they, um, there are some things that they just need to focus on a bit more. Well, another thing was they were building um, throughout the show. They were building um, to a, a debut of a wrestler uh, by the name of uh, QT Marshall. Uh, he's doing a gimmick there. Um, and don't get me wrong. Uh, QT Marshall was a great wrestler. He, you know, I'm not, you know, disrespecting him by his wrestling ability. He could work. Um, he was going by God's gift, QT Marshall. And the gimmick he was doing is very generic in a sense. Cause it's like almost like every heel you sort of ever see, like he's wearing a robe and he's very pompous and like, yeah, yeah. Isn't he, isn't he, I, I, I actually just happened to, I was catching up and watched some ROH and NXT today. Uh, was he the one that like embarrassed the ring guy when he gave him yeah, his robe? He, like threw his robe on top of yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I'd talk to you with that one. <laughs> um but yeah and but he wrestled a guy by the name of and i actually looked made sure to look this up a guy by the name of tadarius thomas mm-hmm. um young kid uh, apparently has a background in mma and in a, some brazilian form of like martial arts which he incorporates into his wrestling and it was phenomenal like he did stuff that i had never seen before and I, it was amazing, like the way he would evade from certain things. He, it was a very innovative style that shocked me, you know. And it was uh, something interesting to see. But it was weird because they, they kept trying to push this QT Marshall, who was sort of, you know, more, you know, regular black tights. And he was doing the, you know, sort of generic heel gimmick. He won with an Alabama slam, which, okay. Um, I do feel like. They need to sort of differentiate themselves and bring in a bunch of different talent that's never been seen before. Yeah, and I yeah. think I think that character has been seen a lot, and a lot of their heel characters are sort of like that. Like you see, like a Mike Bennett or a um, a Roderick Strong or something like that. It's sort of the same character. Um, so I do feel like they need to be more innovative. Mm-hmm. In a sense, um, and I think a lot. It goes to why uh, I think Kenny King mentioned in a shoot interview once that the problem, one of the main problems, is that they're trying to be edgy without having an edge. And I think that does <laughs> say a lot. I think their biggest well, edge. Or go ahead. How edgy can you be when you're on five thirty on syndication on a Saturday? Uh, th- That's which, true. which I think it is in our market here in Pittsburgh. Which, so. which is, I think I don't mean in the sense of I don't think he means in the sense of edgy. I think they need to be more different. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, like for example, um, Kevin Steen. Yeah, I think he is their edge yeah. because he is not what most of Bring of Honor is. Yeah, he's yeah. that one person that's different. Yeah, and he's he's kind of being the pipe bomb guy uh, on the internet at least with a lot of the videos they do and what they do on the video wires, which I think they do kind of let themselves have a little more freedom than they do on the TV show. Uh, now this was the first time I had of watching their show for um, for a good while. And uh, it was kind of just on in the background, and it still it, it feels better. I'm not stuck with a bunch of uh, video wire crap in the middle of it right. uh, from all the live shows I don't give a crap about. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, there was more actual stuff going on. Uh, it was it felt like a fuller hour, maybe because of the venue I was watching. Maybe they cut out all that extra crap or something like that. But it it, it felt like. Uh, you know, at least on Daily Motion or wherever where I caught it, you know, it felt like a good consistent hour of stuff. Um, yeah. and it was interesting. I, the, the, there was what three matches you just talked about. Um, yeah. and plus the, the interaction with red Titus and Charlie Haas was apparently both their partners are gone. Kenny King, of course, with the TNA situation and, and Sean uh, Benjamin getting suspended yeah. for excessive violence, for excessive violence, violence, which that's an interesting thing is like, really? Okay. Um, <laughs> so and I, I don't know what they did, you know, what, what led to that or anything like that. So it was a good pickup spot and I'm going to try to keep up with it just to see, you know, who are these guys? I'll probably see them in gut check in the next couple months. Right. Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, I, and I definitely think they can improve and they can rebound from this. Uh, I would lo- like I said, I would love to see more from that, you know, to Darius uh, Thomas kid. Mm-hmm. They're bringing in ACH coming up for one of their pay-per-views. I feel like those guys that have a different offense, different style could really propel ROH into something really special. Yeah, it, it, it's a good opening for people to get into it. And you're still going to have the diehard are going to get your IP reviews are going to get your DVDs, you know, whatnot. But I think this is maybe the best chance they have right now. And hopefully it grows into something else. This is not the end game here. Think about hopefully I, I, I got to think this is the, the Fox sports spot for ROH. Okay, or no, actually, I yeah. think maybe you can think the HDNet was the Fox Sport equivalent for uh, our, 
for for ROH. Because you can remember TNA uh, uh, popped up on Fox Sports at like a 3 p.m. on Friday slot before they got the deal with Spike TV. Right. Where yeah. it really I remember. Kind of, I remember coming home from school and just catching the end of Impact. Yeah, it was just like so weird because they had like a clock and a ticker and all this stuff because it was a sports channel. Um, and, and I think I think Ring of Honor is somewhere in between uh, that spot of 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 the the equivalent Fox Sports and Spike TV spot. You know, yeah. maybe maybe after a while this will pop up on something more significant, or maybe they'll move it to prime time on like the My Network channels or something like that. You know, because God knows they need something because all they have are reruns of like Ghost Whisperer or something. I don't know. Uh, Twilight Zone with uh, Forrest Whitaker, right? Isn't that what they <laughs> <laughs> Sounds I, I like an Oscar know. winner, I think. Is it? What's that? Isn't Forrest Whitaker an Oscar winner? Yeah, yeah, you know. But uh, Well, then what yeah, the hell is he doing Forrest on Whitaker. fucking Ghost Whisperer or whatever? No, 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 Twilight Zone. I think he's doing, he's like the Rod Sterling of the new Twilight Zone. Oh, that hurts, did a little Forrest bit ago. Whitaker. How are you <laughs> out of shit to do? How did that happen? <laughs> You should be doing so much, right? Uh, all right. On that note, I, I, uh, did you write up the column for that uh, that one issue you had there, uh, uh, Russell fan? Uh, no, no, no. It uh, it should be out possibly by the end of this week. Um, I will have a column about something very interesting on WrestlingMayhemShow dot com that you may want to check out. So um, uh, go, go check that out. And that is the end of the indie minute for this week. Excellent. Well, we're going to go check out uh, a few clips. You saw a little bit there earlier. Uh, but there's a trailer coming up for Cage Fury 2012, the DVD coming out on SorgatronMedia.com slash store. And uh, here's a little peek at WMS Gold. And then remember when. How many times do you just have waffles? Riz, I've had a lot of waffles in my life, <laughs> right? Look at me. I'm built like the Michelin man. I've had a lot of waffles in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if I you go to the out, south and do not eat every meal as barbecue, you fail. Shashi just called. Listen, yeah, that's that's not true. Your really eating habits Thai on vacation food. are dumb. Not true. I, I ate really good Thai food like a week ago. In Thai food. Oh, is, oh, is he? I don't know uh, if he see this. I mean, he said actually. He I kind of wait, me. wait. Okay, so what are you? Oh doing? shit! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Come and get it when I spit it I'm the best, the rip it, best to whip it Yeah, that's a P on the fitted On a mission to get in And flip your team, I'm winning Whizzy sipping, I'm sick of being every sentence Sick of them It is a special Escape the Cage Weapons Cage match On the track, I'll be writing it Conscious, I'll be fighting it Kick, snare, boom, bat, long as they be liking it Welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show This is episode number 335 and this is a segment we like to call Remember When? We're going to remember some things tonight because <laughs> WWE wanted us to remember some things last night. WWE wanted us to remember Triple H and his majestic career. And he had a majestic career. He really did. I mean, you don't get to be a 13-time <laughs> world champion without um, bucking the boss's daughter. But anyways, <laughs> the problem is the Triple H had three eras. And the WWE only likes to ever talk about two of them. They like to talk about DX Triple H when he sold t-shirts and pretend Latin King of Kings Triple H when he was the game. No one ever wants to talk about the original Triple H, the Connecticut Blue Blood, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. The whole goddamn reason his name is Triple H. No, let's not. Let's talk about Jack Tunney and his decision. It's just not right. Now, here's my point. <laughs> Triple H. Hunter Hearst Helmsley. The Connecticut Blue Book. The original I'm better than you character who copied his gimmick from a number of other people. <laughs> did, did he also do cartwheels? No, he no. did not. Okay, 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 okay. However, this, to me, is what I remember Hunter Hearst Helmsley as. This is what I remember, because Triple H was one of the first guys that I saw on Monday Night Raw 
He was one of the first guys I saw in WWE Superstars when I was growing up. This is who I remember. Later on, he became DX Triple H when he finally had enough of being Hunter Hearst Helmsley and decided to edge up his gimmick. Because honestly, him being the guy who is better than other people doesn't get over too quickly. It doesn't sell a ton of merch either. Now it probably but I'm looking at you, Damian Sandow. This is what it, this is what his character was. He had a very famous match that apparently many people want us to remember, which was the pig pen match during his feud with the Godwins, in which he fought a farmer in a mud pit, and that was his match. I believe he lost that match. Somebody correct Pretty me. Sure he did. Yeah, I'm sure he did. He also had the Ultimate Warrior at one point. But he was also the guy who got The Rock his start. The Rock beat Hunter Hearst Helmsley for the Intercontinental title, and that's how The Rock got his start as a champion of sorts. Yeah, can we... I mean, can we go back and recognize that his greatest time in the WWE slash WWF is when he was only competing for the IC belt? Mm-hmm. Sure. He actually had good promos. Yeah. He had legit. He had an actual character. When he went to DX, he just made fart jokes. Which, by the way, fart jokes, still hilarious. Yeah, don't get us wrong. Fart From- jokes will always be funny. Listen to gold. Buy the app. $1.99 or 63 rubles and 73 kopecks. <laughs> we love fart joke. The problem is that when you dick and when you do dick and fart jokes over and over and over again, week in and week out, it gets kind of boring. And then when you're the king of kings, you just make angry I got a poop faces all the time. Nobody likes that either. When Triple H was Hunter Hearst Helmsley, he had a legitimate character. He had something to work from. And it was awesome. There's a reason the mat the move is called the pedigree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you gotta really, unless you were like there at the beginning, it doesn't make any sense. Really? Right. You're just mm-hmm. like, well, that doesn't make why is that, it the pedigree? He's the game. That doesn't connect. You know? What people stand for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like those sorts of things don't exist without this character, yet the WWE refuses to remember it. They refuse to put it in the video packages. They showed like 12 video packages for Triple H last night. Mm-hmm. One of them included Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Not one. Meanwhile, Hunter Hearst Helmsley was like his first like five years in the WWE. How do you miss that? Yeah. 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 It, it's, uh, I mean, Goldust. He had battles with Goldust. His feud mm-hmm. with Goldust was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's that selective memory. I mean, how many times have we got to see a Degeneration X? Uh, hey, remember Degeneration X, just like it was yesterday, because you saw the package yesterday, and you probably see it again, and 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 again and again. And they'll um, probably have another DVD out. And exactly, you know. exactly. Um, so hey, that that's usually the way it is. I mean, uh, the only reason we get to see Rocky Mayavia in his blue... God knows what, and uh, and, and funny puffed up hair from when he debuted because it's a good story, you know. Um, you don't really see much domination stuff when they go flashing back on the rock unless they're doing something a little more, a little bit more in depth, you know. That's not in a package on Raw for the uh, you know twentieth anniversary coming up or something. No. That's one thing I realized uh, the, this week, last night when we we're talking about some stuff with Raw. You know, you know, Raw's going to be twenty next year. Yeah. Wow. You thought this thousandth episode was bad. <laughs> They're going to do, they'll, I mean, they will, I think they'll flip through. The problem is, is that they'll skip a lot of stuff that we remember. And that's why segment, we do this for the listeners. We do this for the viewers because we like to remember things that the WWE occasionally does. not And this has been number one. All right. And with that, we take it from remembering things to getting mad. It's Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem right now. Mayhem Show, it's Mad Mike, once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Okay, just finished watching Raw, and I have to say, the Daniel Bryan Kane anger management session was probably one of the funniest things I've seen on Raw in years. 
you know, if we had said five years ago that Brian Danielson would be a part of one of those segments in Raw that go throughout the entire episode and are just used for comedic value, um, we probably all would have dick punched ourselves just for being so ridiculous. But uh, it was fantastic, and Brian saying, I don't think this is a good idea before Kane went into his whole thing was tremendous. I wish Kane mentioned that he tombstone Linda McMahon, though. Or that he set JR on fire. Well, actually, he mentioned they set a few people on fire, so I guess that works. But, um, so, the main event was CM Punk and Jerry Lawler, which I thought would have been a better main event than SummerSlam. That one promo setting up the match was more entertaining than the entire build of SummerSlam, in my opinion. And in honor of that, the Mad Mike Facts of the Week brought to you by WrestlingData.com, is about Jerry, the King Lawler. Now, got two facts this week that I thought were pretty interesting. Apparently, Jerry Lawler has commentated on 833 episodes of Raw. 833 episodes. That is a fuck ton of episodes. Like, I don't think there's anyone who's been on Raw more than Jerry Lawler at this point. Which, I mean, that's kind of saying something. Uh, But as far as his in-ring career, Jerry Lawler has been wrestling since 1971. So, you'd imagine quite a bit of matches. In fact, Jerry Lawler has had 2,416 matches. And he's uh, batting over 500 because he's won 1,304 of them pretty insane, but then again, most of them were probably in Memphis, you know, where he owns the company, but, um, beyond that, TNA this week, oh, TNA, um, see, the, these final couple weeks are really why I hate the Bound for Glory series, because they lose all track of things like math, uh, Ken Anderson went into his final match of the Bound for Glory series, which I like, that they stuck to the wrestle one person all the time. That's good. That's a good thing. I didn't expect him to do that. But, um, so Anderson was going into his final match. He was down by 10 points. Didn't go for a single submission hold. Not an arm bar, not, not a chin lock, not an abdominal stretch, nothing. Anderson, you were setting yourself up to fail. And it's funny because... The commentators didn't even realize it until after, and they were like, oh, we're fucking idiots. We probably should have said something about it. Oh, well. But uh, beyond that, on TNA, we had Bane and his glory hole crew. Um, I don't know what their plan was. I don't know what the TNA people's plan was. I mean, when you were beating down every member of Aces and Eights... Why didn't you just pull down all of their bandanas? Like, all of them. So you could actually see who they are. Because it was the most awkward thing to hear the... To hear Taz and Tanae talk about, because they didn't know anyone's names. And, uh, finally, Claire Lynch. Listen, bitch. If you want to be an actress, like, an actress, not just olive oil... You need to get used to people talking shit about you, especially when you're not a very good actress. I mean, let's be honest. In the storyline, I don't blame you for how the storyline was written. That's not your fault. I'm not blaming you for that. But, I mean, you you are horrible. You are horrible. I've seen my, my dog look more convincing at being sad about something. You had this stupid little AJ, you're the father of baby bullshit smile every single time because you knew it was ridiculous. You're an actress. Fucking act. Alright? And while I'm in Florida if I see you dressed as fucking olive oil, I'm going to ask how your baby is. And I don't mean sweet pea. But uh, other than that, AJ Styles has a great you are not the father face. And that's what I learned in wrestling this week. So this is Mad Mike for the minute. Peace, bitches. It didn't make sense. Okay. She, right. Does she really look like olive oil? I, I, mm. I guess so. She, she, no. At least it's just looks version. like olive oil. 
What did she? The, the, is the reason she's not there because she was like getting thrashed or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, everybody said she sucked, so she she left. Okay. Everyone she was, was like, telling I'm her that she wow. sucked. She didn't want it to wow. ruin her reputation. I would. You're you're talking actress job in pro wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I guess that's the only acting jobs you can get in Florida. For, uh, for what, what anyone wondering, fuck? it was all faked. There was no baby or pregnancy. Yeah, oh, yeah, um, yeah. TNA. I, I know a lot of people were complaining about it on the on the uh, uh, Facebook group. Um, no, it wasn't very good. And yeah, why didn't they pull the uh, the mask down? They they did on one guy that didn't matter and nobody recognized and 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 whatever. Um, oh, she uh, plays olive oil at Universal, apparently. Oh. Huh. This is the... Uh, How does Mad Mike know There's no this? reason for that. Mad Mike <laughs> does his research. He's stalking Claire Lynch. He wants to have a big baby with her. <laughs> the actual reason Claire Lynch left TNA, and it's not being widely reported, so this is another Mayhem Show exclusive, the actual reason that Claire Lynch left TNA is because she has a little tiny penis. Hmm. Yeah, that's another note by Riz. If it was all fake, what was in Borash's envelope? <laughs> you, you can't have a pregnancy test if there's no baby. <laughs> yeah, you can. I it just I comes back do. negative. Like, what? No, you have then to have DNA they from, submit the from the baby, the baby uh, part. <laughs> from the baby Wait, part. Wait, I should, I should say I don't know how pregnancy tests work. Can I, can I, as, as somebody who, who does know, test. kind of, sort of, how this no, works? No, pret- I should rephrase it. Paternity test. <laughs> Wait, did test, you have a pregnancy, pregnancy test? test. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, of course you would. Paternity <laughs> test, not Wait, pregnancy yes, test. Yes, I did. Just going- <laughs> no. <laughs> so when you pee it on the stick, AJ. <laughs> it, listen, it's way harder than it looks. <laughs> um, no, listen. You can have... Did, did, were they calling it a paternity test? No, it's a paternity test. Because they were trying to find if AJ was the baby. Baby they, dad. They were, they were, they were Mar- 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 publishing that shit. <laughs> that's a good recovery. Okay, rhythm, that's man. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that's dumb. That's called it was continuity. A fake baby and we'll get into that baby later too. What would have but been still, in the results? I if you know. have, you can do like you can do just a regular pregnancy test and not need anything from the dad. No, no, no. But yeah, if you're yeah, saying yeah. that you, ha- if you had a paternity test, yeah, I'm sorry, yes. I, I phrased it wrong. Paternity yeah. test, Wait, not pregnancy can test. A, can you do a paternity test before the baby's born? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know I that. So. I think it just uh, requires a longer needle. Yes. yes <laughs> Am I not wrong? No, you're so, right. Okay. Yeah, you're so are right. you majoring in science? Science. No, so, yeah. Science. <laughs> what? But you're right you there. Know. She would have had to be pregnant for there to get any material to test. Why did we just get cotton in air? Have a headache. <laughs> yes. Why are we still talking about this? Because it's so yeah, ridiculous and stupid. No. And yes. And somebody got I a threw, message. Um, I threw a, a note in the, the thing. While we're talking about this real quick, when I was on vacation, we watched a little TNA with uh, uh, I did with Lady Lunchbox, and I warned her. I was like, "This is awful. It's bad. We know it's bad. We talk about how bad it is on the show. Sometimes it'll surprise you, but not often." She's like, "Okay." And after it was, it was right when they got to the Claire Lynch segment. Uh, she got so angry, she was yelling at me because it was bad. <laughs> I got in trouble because TNA was bad. She's like, "This is." What the fuck are we watching? This is awful. It does, this doesn't make any sense. This is just a waste. This is a waste of time. And then TNA, she went to bed. Ruin, TNA ruining relationships since 2002. <laughs> you know, yeah. TNA is the highest cause of domestic violence. <laughs> oh. Wow. Um, yeah, so that's TNA's yeah. report for this week. So Raw last night. Uh, oh. Was a little different. I know uh, we talked a little bit about Triple H, but I think we need uh, we we you know the Triple H <laughs> speech happened, and uh, supposedly they did it because he didn't get much sympathy at the end of SummerSlam. Oh. Uh, but I I think there was another perspective here, and unfortunately the guy just got kicked off uh, offline that really had that perspective. So I'm going to fill until uh, this call comes but, back uh, through I'll, I'll and we fill. get I'll him fill. and we get him. Oh, we did what? I don't think you were even here for this part. No, but I, I want to talk about this because fucking I, – I know, but I watched the after part of it. And yes, he was going for more sympathy. Yes. That's why That's why he waited a week so they could have a sappy Shawn Michaels video talking about how he's the greatest <laughs> in the world for some fucking reason. No, he isn't. Okay. 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 And it, it was stupid. Okay? It was – and it was like – 
it was it was almost that like the fans were just like trying to give him sympathy so he fucking go away. You know, just stop so you can go yeah. away. Um, I no, it was it was bad. Edge. You will never. I'm sorry. To and to do that sort of segment when Edge had reti- retired, you know, how many months ago, and people were legitimately, you know, upset of him leaving and legitimately felt bad for him and, um, you know, thanked him mm-hmm. and Triple H, and it was so forced and so like it was horrible. And, and yes, no one convinced. No one is convinced that your career is done. No one is. You have torn your quad. You have. You were thrown off a fucking uh, uh, car and exploded or whatever when you flew to Boston. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. never. And I'm. Uh, you never look. He never looks vulnerable enough. Yeah. He's never looked vulnerable. So he broke his arm. Last time Lesnar broke his arm, he wore a cast for like two weeks and then fucking old sold it. Mm-hmm. So why is this any different? Why uh, should I care? We got AJ back. AJ, what was your take? Oh, he's out again. Wait, wait. No, oh, I, no. I, no, I just got a pop up, I think. Is he here? Is he here? Is he hiding behind this? No. Wait. 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 What? Are you there? Eight. AJ? Wait. All right. AJ's not here. Um, <laughs> AJ is not here right now. <laughs> uh, no. So I can yell at Triple H more. Great. No. Mr. AJ no here right now. Mr. AJ no here right now. No. No. Hello, are you there? Is is he? No. AJ's new selling this phone call. I I have a theory about Triple H and WrestleFan. And WrestleFan? (laughs) And WrestleFan, yes. Okay. I used to fucking goddamn hate Triple H. I hated him. When he would come on the screen, I would curse at it. Okay. And uh and sacrificed chickens to make him go away. Uh and I think it's because I was it seems like younger fans, younger fans with opinions fucking hate Triple H. My opinion, if you go back go back, back to the old old uh, wrestling mayhem shows, I would go off on that motherfucker just constantly uh bitching and screaming about him and hated him and I've since mellowed and come to appreciate Triple H. And now WrestleFan is in the same position. He's a young man watching wrestling, and he fucking hates Triple H. I understand where he's coming from, but I, I, I wonder if it's not that age thing. It's like it's like uh, chicken wings. I find when you get older as a man, you like chicken wings. Not so much when you're young. You're like, fuck it, it's fried chicken. I'll just eat fried chicken. So I'll put barbecue sauce on it. Fuck it and fuck you. Yeah, that's what you do when you're a young man. When you get older, you, you come to appreciate uh, wings. And I don't know what that is, but I think it has something to do with that, age and Triple H. That, my friend, is the greatest analogy uh, I've AJ? ever heard. Thank you for that. Just a thought. AJ? <laughs> Last I, night in the Google Hangout, while Triple H was walking away, or oh, I'm sorry, he was in the ring and crying. Same thing. I played End of the Road by Boys to Men, which made it way funnier. One and a half times. One and a half times. I would like Triple H to go away. I respect Triple H. I respect the fact that he's ha- he's th- a 13 type champion, that he has had amazing feuds for long periods of time. He was there during the Attitude Era. But like he said in the promos with Taker that I have paid attention to, they're the last of their kind. Taker's got to hang it up soon. You don't sell the 20-0 WrestleMania DVD and not have one match in the tank. I'm sorry. That's done. I don't think I don't think Taker's coming back. But Triple H, I think, needs to recognize that he needs to go away. Mm-hmm. He needs to come back for one more match, one feud, and he needs to give the retirement run to somebody who actually deserves it. Not Brock exactly. Lesnar. No. Yeah. yeah no. Brock Lesnar is a part-time guy. And while he'll get the UFC crowd to come in because they'll want to see what Brock Lesnar does in the wrestling ring because he was a UFC guy, he's not the guy you want to give the I retired one of the long one of the long term guys. You know what? I'm going to put Triple H out there as like a top 25 all time guy. Definitely, definitely. I don't think there's any way you deny that. You can't name you can't name Flair's 16 titles and then say that Triple H's 13 titles are invalid. I'm sorry, you can't do it. So, 
in a way, you got to let him. Triple H is a guy who's going to. He's uh, obviously he's going to go as soon as he retires. He's going to the Hall of Fame. Shawn Michaels is going to induct him. It'll be a DX reunion. Tada! I've just called the, the Hall of Fame ceremony for probably next year. <laughs> However, <laughs> he needs to give the Hall of Fame rub to somebody else. He needs to give it to a guy like a Seth Rollins or uh, a guy like a Derek Bateman or somebody like that. Somebody really young who could use that bump to build their star off of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead of you can't give it to Punk. Punk's a big enough star already. You can't give it to Cena. Cena's a mega star. If you give it to anybody who's a legitimate enough star right now, fine. Give it to Ziggler. Give it to a guy like Ziggler. Give it to The Miz. Give it to... Cody Rhodes. Give it to Cody Rhodes. There's another one. I remember my brother, and I'm not kidding you. I'm sorry, Casey. i got to put you on blast like this. He fully believed, I think it was a WrestleMania 27. He fully believed that Ted DiBiase Jr. was going to get the Undertaker retirement rub. Wow. Time DiBiase was legitimately building. He got the Marine movie. He, he just got the Marine movie. He thought he thought DiBiase was going to be the next thing. That he was going to be the next thing going. The problem is, is that DiBiase can't really talk on a microphone. And Cody Rhodes <laughs> didn't learn how to talk on a microphone. Yeah, they put him in a movie. movie. But they put him in a movie. Yeah. I mean... There's no microphones in movies. <laughs> But I mean, that's the thing. You've got what? if you're gonna give if you're gonna have a big time rest retire, somebody's got to be the one to put him out, and somebody's got to get the rub for in that can say, "I'm the one who put Triple H out. I'm the reason he's in the he's in the retirement home now. I'm exactly. the reason Taker's in the retirement home." Triple H, if Triple H and Taker had the last match against each other, and it's just like that, I'm sorry, neither one gave neither one put anybody over, even though those guys have put guys over for years. I'm sorry. That was a that's a shit way to go out. If if we're going to talk about this business, it's not happening. Yeah. So I I would like to see somebody really get it. The problem is that everybody keeps. I see I see Damian Sandow in the chat room. They're not going to give Sandow the Triple H bump. Not now. Not now. It's going to be whoever they figure the next John Cena is going to be, and let's see if that even comes out of anywhere. Right I know, tri- and, and Mad Mike. I know Triple H isn't done. I know he's not done. However, if you're going to push this little retirement bump, like Triple H not knowing if he could do it anymore, Even, somebody's going to have to do it at and, some point. And that's the thing. Even if he is done or they want to play it off like he is done, and maybe that goes back to what Lunchbox was saying, how I'm young and I have these opinions, but we all know that even when you do retire <laughs> Triple H, you have a cushy office job to go to. Like, no offense. I know we make fun that you fuck Stephanie and you get to your position. But the honest truth is when you retire, you're going to have that cushy office job. You're still going to be in this business. I, I, I want to submit that uh, but- Triple H will never officially be re- retired. Even when he's retired from ring you know, stuff and everything like that, he's going to be the McMahon that pops in there when he's 50. Exactly. He's the last the last thing you said, but like really give some emphasis on a couple words in that sentence. Okay. Give, uh, what was the last part of it? Uh, that he still has a cushy office job? Never be out of this business. <laughs> give it, give it, come on, come on, one more time. Uh, this business. <laughs> Drink. Uh, <laughs> also, you said amazing. I just want to say adjectives, man. Amazing. Amazing, amazing show, amazing arena, amazing time, amazing writing, amazing booking. Amazing. You guys. <laughs> it's my word, okay? Fuck you. <laughs> it's his word. It's his word. Excellent. Adjectives. You're in college, young man. Excellent. <laughs> Splen difference. How about that, okay? How about you, All right, let's talk, let's how talk, how let's, you shove that up your Let's people? step away from Raw for a moment, and let's talk some about, about something even more important, something brand new, something something that's right before Dragon Ball Z. I'm talking about Saturday Morning Slam. Um, did anybody watch it? Nope. Nope. We, I we, was asleep. We actually had a pretty tremendous uh, discussion about this, uh, because the WrestleFan uh, took a position on the match, which was Kobe I Kingston didn't take a versus Heath Slater. No, no, I think it's a good discussion. Uh, we don't have to have the discussion we had last night. 
Uh, but about how stupid I am. We, how <laughs> stupid you are. Oh, it's not as bad as this article I saw in Bleacher Report that says uh, uh, Saturday morning uh, slams rules make it a waste of time. So um, I wouldn't I, go that far. No, no, no. What, what, are, what are your thoughts on this? Well, for those that don't know, um, I, they announced apparently that the Institute rule that for their matches on Saturday morning slam they have banned all moves that uh, affect either the head or the neck. Um, okay. I, I've sort of refer. I was. I was sort of had different opinions on, like varying opinions on it. I. The, well, the biggest thing though is that while it's fine, and while the wrestlers can work around it, it's not going to affect what's really going on in the ring. I don't see the correlation between a show that is kid friendly having to limit moves to the head or the neck. Okay. Uh, that's my big thing. I don't see. And some people say that it's to conv- to make sure that kids aren't doing this stuff at home and they're not doing stupid shit and breaking their necks or getting concussions. But I feel like the same thing is going to happen. Uh, the same thing would happen if for like somebody doing a suplex or like a brain buster or something as to someone doing a body slam or throwing someone out of the ring mm-hmm. or you know. I think there's that, but in the in the simplest form. Wrestling involves physicality. It involves fighting. You know, I don't think there can be wrestling without fighting in some form or fashion. You know, one guy is fighting another guy. You know. So I don't think there's a point where they can limit it. Um, it's fine that they're doing it, mm-hmm. but I feel it's sort of really pointless. Yeah, and, and, and you know... As you saw, if you watched that first episode, this really exists outside of what what else you know of of the WWE storyline universe. I think. Um, what well, we were saying last night, somebody said uh, uh, this 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 show is to the WWE programming as WWE Kids Magazine is to the WWE. I think Chris said that. And he's yeah. yelling at me in the chat. He's yelling at you in the chat room. He says he wants on this. Yeah, 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 like Mad Mike says, and we talked about this last night. It's really them kind of covering their bases with the show. There's different roles. They're directly aiming at kids. They want to make sure if they do get sued again for some stupid kids breaking each other's necks, that they say, well, this is what we pro- we provide for kids. We do the crazy stuff after 10 o'clock where your kids shouldn't be up anyways, which is the, the standard time for that we talked about the watershed a lot last night and everything um so i and it's a lot of debate like a lot of people are like it's pointless it's like, well the, all the people writing about this it's not for them you and know? i get that i'm and not I, supposed to be of that I, I'm, it's not for me i'm not supposed to be a 31 year old that wakes up and excited to watch some wrestling on saturday morning before <laughs> dragon ball z but i am and i accept that i'm not going to get cm punk uh telling me about how you know you're you're uh, uh, you know addressing his his, uh, sister's drinking problem with Chris Jericho or anything like that. I'm going to learn how to dance with the Funkasaurus. Now, that said, uh, there were, like, I I thought it was pretty enjoyable when you looked at it, and, and they actually, like, did the Funkasaurus dance segment, and they looked back at other dancers, like even like Junkyard Dog, Rikishi, Too Cold, Too Cold Scorpio, like there's strange stuff like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, kind of weird. Like that was a great throwback, and it gets the kids into the history of it, which we know WWE's all about, like, taking advantage and profiting from their history right now. If you just look around WWE.com and look at all the videos they provide for free at this time. Um, but they also teach little kids that WCW is stupid and dumb. <laughs> Well, yeah, get them young. Get them young. You know, yeah. like nobody else was better than us. Obviously. Nothing good ever happened in WCW. I mean, yeah, and it's getting them young, and and so when they're older, and they'll they'll get that other programming, and they'll buy the forty five dollar programming because they're they're old enough, and they're the people that that applies to, you know. Um, no, I think they're. I I, I think it's a it's it's a, a great strategy by them. <laughs> The CW was stupid and dumb. Judy Bagwell on a forklift match was a, a thing. A fourth of WCW was stupid and dumb. Yes, and that's just what we remember. We're talking about a lot of great things that happened in WCW earlier when we're talking about the factions and the cruiserweights. So there you go. Um, I don't know. Did, did anybody else watch it or, or have an opinion on, on what's going on on Saturday morning here? Uh, most of the reports you've heard lately about uh somebody killing another person like kids killing each other because they were emulating wrestling moves it was it's usually uh because of some kind of headlock uh they're usually it's because they're choked to death some kind of headlock maneuver stuff like that um 
those are the those are the ones that are killing people. So I mean, I can I can kind of understand why they're avoiding the neck maneuvers. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's usually just the injuring or paralysis, which you don't hear about as much. Oh, it's just kids being kids, um, you know, choke slams and tombstones and whatever. You know, you don't hear about that as widely reported in the news as the straight up this person killed this person because they choked them to death. Yeah. So. Exactly. Right. And I get it. I mean, I, in, I guess I get it, but, you know. And also, and this might be a stretch, but I just want to throw it out there. Uh, Benoit? <laughs> he killed he killed his family with headlocks yeah yeah just yeah. just throwing it out there yeah yeah that's a that's a that's a thing wait wait so who no i don't remember any of that I didn't, huh? i don't remember any of that stuff none of that who is that person that you're talking about <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's been one in the chat room? Uh, yeah, also from Raw last night. Uh, I'll think about it. Oh I'll God, think about it. was uh, the meme of the. You night, know what, I punk? I'll think about it. <laughs> and, and then he walks away. Yeah, what? AJ, How do you know? No, 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 no. Jerry King, Jerry the King Lawler should not get music for. I'll think about it. That is the lamest blow off to any promo ever. The ever, only best part ever. was when they were, uh, they had, a, I think they had a match and they were going to go to commercial and Michael Cole looks at him and he's like, what are you going to do, King? And he's like, I'm still thinking about it. I, and it was, out, it was after a <laughs> recap. It was after a recap, like half an hour later. It's so, ridiculous. Like, Jerry, I don't feel bad for Jerry the King Lola at all. <laughs> oh, fuck him. You know what? At this point, Jerry, I get it. You've been around a long time. You were, you know, basically in charge of Tennessee, you know, Memphis wrestling and Tennessee wrestling. And, and you worked the territories, got your shot in WWE. You had that. I'll say this. The Jerry the King Lawler, Bret Hart feud was actually pretty awesome back mm-hmm. in the day. It was. I legitimately hated Jerry the King Lawler, not for his announcing, but for his just being a bad dude in the yeah. whole in, in the whole feud with Bret Hart. And then there was the uh, Jerry the King Lawler versus Doink, and then the midget tag the midget tag teams they they brought along with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, those are the, that's what I remember Jerry the King Lawler. And then eventually he was corporate ass kiss announcer Jerry Lawler. Yeah. Then he was perverted fourteen year old boy Jerry Lawler, which Punk made mention of. And then uh, he was face stooge. Jerry Lawler. Yeah. Those three phases of Jerry the King Lawler's announcing career. At no point has he played a straight man on anything. At no point has he done any of that. He's simply yeah. just said. And that's the thing. I think people complain a lot about, you know, in the whole dynamic of announcers being faces and heels. People complain a lot that, you know, Michael Cole makes turns immediately and just contradicts himself from the past. But people forget Jerry Lawler makes that same turn. It's just in the different direction. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, back when, like back when the Daniel Bryan thing, people were talking about how Michael Cole um, was – for some. why was he siding with Daniel Bryan after all these years of <sighs> – berating him just because he's a heel but you may forget jerry lawler also acted like he was a jackass that didn't that didn't uh, earn anything even though he watched him his stuff with the miz and you know and he supported him through that but immediately now he is a bad guy who does you know he doesn't deserve anything Mm -hmm. you know it's no one there's no consistency it's bad on both levels I, I've made this. I made this mention before when we were talking about Michael Cole and how we were really starting to get annoyed with Michael Cole, and he has really toned it down. Thank you, thank you, Michael Cole. You've dialed it back like twelve notches, and I appreciate that. He still slides in his little bits here and there, but he is nowhere near the asshole level, asshole center of attention level that he was like leading into and following SummerSlam two years ago. Nowhere near that right. level anymore. Thank you, Michael Cole. Yeah. We want. I, I I I still feel this way. I feel that the play by play guy being a face announcer is the best way to go, and you let the color guy, the color commentator, be the heel announcer. If he you're going to do like a heel and face announcer team, which is usually a pretty good thing, usually, 
if you have the color guy, he's only sliding in the heel things, and you can sell the face. Which and is that's the feel- thing, though. Feel- With the play-by-play guy, the play-by-play guy doesn't necessarily need to be face. He just needs to be impartial. Yeah. The well, guy can, he, he doesn't need to be an announcer that supports the face and has to rally behind the face. The, there can be one that rally behind the heel, that, and that's the color guy, but the play-by-play has to be impartial. The face can do that himself in the ring. The best ever at that. Mm-hmm. He could swing the face just a little bit with, like, some, he, he always supported Austin. Yep. Always support Austin. Obviously, because they, they have a very long term, they had a very long term relationship. And so he supported his friend. I get that. But he also remained impartial in a lot of things. And when there, whenever somebody would bring up like a controversial side to something, he would always try to play the middle. He's like, well, I'll let them figure that out. I'm not the guy who does that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that, that's what made Jim Ross a great announcer is that he would sell the story. But what's the story? Yeah. And that's it, that, that's just what made him. And he also knew when to say things and when not to. Especially if something had happened that was like a despicable act. He <laughs> knew to just say a few words. He didn't have to ramble on. Cole occasionally does that. Drive me nuts. Yep. Hey, hey, <laughs> Jerry would just, Bobby. Jim would just say, I, ca- I can't believe that. I can't even believe this. Yeah, and, and Riz mentions it in the chat room. Gorilla Monsoon was another one that was impartial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gorilla mm-hmm. Monsoon and Bobby the Brain Heenan were the best announcing combination. I, I would put them like on right there with Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross, mm-hmm. if not a little bit mm-hmm. above. They just did it perfectly. Bobby the Brain Heenan is a golden god when it comes to announcing. He's hilarious. And it's the saddest thing ever. Saddest thing saddest thing ever that uh the 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 bobby the brain heenan's uh his health troubles have have basically affected his voice for the most part yeah yeah that's so Uh, that's so horrible that that's the part it it, it attacked you know and you know honestly if if it had happened and i don't wish any you know medical maladies on bobby the brain i really don't i i wish bobby the brain Heenan all the best i really do hope he gets better if it had happened any other part of his body, it would have been better. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, get an arm. Can I get like a left arm? Left arm. I think he's a righty. Can we get a left? Like <laughs> that happened, and then he could still like. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and, and also from the chat room, they're throwing out there. <laughs> Mad Mike says still maintains that WrestleMania nine best announcing team ever. Jr. Heenan and Macho. That was pretty yeah, that was a good. good. That was some good stuff. That was some good stuff. All right, let's move over from there. Well, of course, you know, it, it culminated, of course, in the in the uh, uh, cage match that night. Uh, is CM Punk a heel yet? Nope. No, you're still maintaining yep. he's not a heel. It's all about respect. It's all about respect. I think it's taking respect to a different different uh, level there. What about you, uh, there, LB? Uh, I don't know. He's certainly getting there. Yeah, he's he's. I don't know. I think to be a heel there's that obnoxious evil for evil's sake kind of thing no not necessarily there's also justification you know no yeah, yeah no no true villain thinks that they're a villain i think he's definitely on his way yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the thing while yes he did bloody jerry lawler and continue to choke him everything he's been doing has still while maybe heel ish has been justified. Mm-hmm. Uh, from from the chat room, Big PPC, the res- it's the uh, respect Bret Hart heel gimmick. It's the respect Bret Hart heel <laughs> gimmick. <laughs> there you go. And I, did well? Did you see the stuff that um, he's been doing with the whole Bret Hart thing? Like he had wore his trunks, I guess, at SummerSlam that were Bret Hart inspired. Mm-hmm. But also, he tweeted. Uh, I think Bret Hart tweeted something good about Punk, and then Punk responded, "Just tr- uh, just trying to follow in your image." Hmm. That's nice. That that's awesome, and, and that's great. He's one of those guys that definitely has a head of <laughs> respect <laughs> for respect for the the business like that. Oh, Rodney Dangerfield Million. was a good heel. <laughs> Millions of rubles. Millions um, of rubles. Millions of rubles. All right. On that note, it's probably about that time uh, for us to wrap up here. So uh, let's learn. What did you learn from wrestling this week, guys? Uh, let's go around the horn here, Russell fan. 
I learned from wrestling this week from the Brodus Clay Sin Cara tag team match that Sin Cara is the worst dancer ever. <laughs> <laughs> Not only does he botch in the ring, he botches his dance moves. Awesome. Uh, also, DJ Lunchbox. Uh, I learned that uh, CMLL is fucking entertaining to watch. Uh, yep. The new Mystico is a skinny little guy with terrible back knee. Um, they have a midget dressed up as a gorilla who's magnificent. And sometimes they just won't show a wrestler's entrance. They'll just show women dressed like strippers. Mr. AJ Bo Diggity. I learned that continuity is not important to the WWE. Case in point, sort. Do you have that clip, or at least a screenshot of of what happened, handy? Of of which part? What what? The the whole thing we talked about and made fun of last night. Uh, the cast. Oh, the cast. Uh, you you know you know we were wrong, right? We were right. No, the video we were looking at was uh, backwards and zoomed in, so it wouldn't get caught on YouTube. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Nope. Huh. Fucking god damn it. Well, we thought Triple H's cast was on the wrong arm. Yes, I, yes. I it was wrong, but we, uh, uh, didn't we have this happen? Didn't we mention this earlier about continuity issues? I forget. But continuity is not important <laughs> to the WWE because they will they, they have this selective memory thing. Yeah, they make their own continuity. Uh, I will. Hearst Holmesley not existing. The whole uh, uh, Canadian wrestler X not existing. Uh, the fact that they never talk about the Nation of Domination, even though it was the biggest faction they had in the mm-hmm. WWE for like mm-hmm. three years. Um, the fact that we thought, at least, at least I thought, that, um, uh, what was it, uh, Triple H had the cast on the wrong arm. Bobby F. Town with the joke of the night, ah, uh, the wrong arm of the raw. <laughs> 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 you know, but it's great because I sent I sent that link around, and with that clip, you can't tell it's backwards with anything until you like find a clip or that you can see the sign or the apron or something like that. So everybody that looks at that clip that I found goes right to the part where it's the wrong arm because it's backwards. And I think we perpetuated a new rumor, and I like that. Um, I'm gonna. Well, but, I, well go I would ahead. Also, point out, uh, that we uh we also pay attention to i also learned that nobody pays attention to the details except for me uh because russell fan and nobody else in the, in the chat in the hangout last night caught the fact that uh cena kept saying that uh uh that cm punk had busted jerry lawler's ear open which is completely possible by the way if you've ever watched a ufc fight or you know any sort of uh wrestling but uh, the thing that no one else caught was the fact that if he has a busted open ear, he probably can't put on a headset, which means Jerry Lawler can't announce. And you know what that means? It's Christmas and my birthday all over again. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I don't want to see him. From the chat room, we have a few of them going on here. Um, do, 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 scroll back up. Mad Mike learned that AJ Styles was a great, you are not the father face, and the, and Kane doesn't even know why he, oh shit, where it moved, uh, why he attacks Pete Rose. Uh, big, big PPC says, I learned how to get to the chat. Oh no. And, uh, to watch this show, and yes, Sin Cara is terrible dancer, and he, Slater, likes to air guitar as his taunts, he kicks Santino. Zero Two K learned that I'm already tired of GM AJ Lee, mm-hmm. and and he also learned that Sandow and Rhodes is an amazing tag team, brains and looks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Riz also learned that I, I found a close second to Cranky Vince. His name is DC Bork Laser. Also learned. Um, I'll think about it. And Bobby mm-hmm. says I learned that I still have to watch Raw, but I did see CM Punk do his best Red Rooster impression. Also, bacon jerky is awesome. What um, does that have to do with wrestling? I, <laughs> um, I learned that uh, while we, we we have problems with continuity, sometimes once again somebody at WWE gets it as they recap the entire Kane legacy in that anger management meeting. Mm-hmm. That was tremendous. I really, I really want this. I really hope next week they legitimately continue this thing and they bring yes. in their anger collages. Yes, and I love how that <laughs> carried over to the, the kane uh, Zack Ryder match. How about you there, Chach? I learned that it's going to take CM Punk running someone over with a steamroller 
before <laughs> this show thinks that he's a fucking heel. Yep. I think he's a heel. I think he's a heel, and I don't care. I love it. Well, you're outvoted. I love it. Um, you we're outvoted, Josh. Sorry. <laughs> all right, guys, this has been your Wrestling Mayhem show. Please go check out all the past episodes and all I'm the great sure articles going on wrestling. at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check us out on iTunes, Blip TV, the Roku Blip TV app, and Stitcher, of course. Uh, go check us out. We're at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Um, drop us a line on the Facebook page, on the Google Plus page, and also the uh, always active Facebook open group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, you can uh, check out sound drop us a line to good times good times at wrestling mayhem show.com drop a line to 412-206-WMS0 for the hotline and uh, of course buy the app WMS Gold dollar ninety nine on the iOS and the Amazon app stores where you get all that exclusive content we are here every Tuesday uh, around about 8.30 p.m., 9 p.m. or so, uh, where we get the mayhem on live.sorgatronmedia.com. If you want to join us in the chat room, like Big PPC, Riz, Mad Mike, Bobby F. J. Town, uh, Matt Carlin drops in there every once in a while, all kinds of people, Zero 2K, um, Monkey Rodeo. Oh, oh, that's something else. Sorry. Um, <laughs> And, uh, oh, hey, next week we uh, have a guest scheduled. He is one Jock Sampson, <laughs> who apparently wants yeah. to wrestle Chachi. Or Chachi oh, no. wants to... Uh, I don't know. How, what happened? Real quick, Chachi. What, 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 how did this come about? Uh, Saturday, as we do after every show we record with Joe, and in general, we go to Denny's. Mm-hmm. Uh, at Denny's, Joe... Dabrowski. Uh, Dabrowski. Um, he got a little bit of marinara sauce on his nice purple dress shirt. And proceeded to start licking himself right there at the table. As he does. Yeah. Um, so, jokingly, I told him I was going to go home and lick myself to see if I tasted like marinara. Well, the next day, he was sending tweets out saying that if you contact him and inform him that you're old enough to wrestle and you could probably take half his roster, he's not going to book you. Mm-hmm. So I responded Amongst to Amongst other tips about people's demos that were being sent to him yeah. and stuff like that about length and stuff being crap. So I uh, I responded to him. I said, one, I don't taste like marinara. And two, I can't take half your roster. So to which he responded, I, uh, he said, so basically no one wants to lick you and you can't lick anyone else which was a a play on words, um, considering that he's a commentator, is actually pretty normal for him. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, He likes words. He's running space in your head, Josh. Jock Sampson uh, responded to the whole conversation that said, I'll wrestle this guy. It would be hilarious. We can make it a shoot. (laughs) So, yeah. So next week... uh, that's you. Sorry. I'll, I'll confront Jock Sampson about wrestling. Wow. And uh, leading to the next RWA show yeah. on your birthday. So you may get booked on your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> and I might have to find a replacement cameraman. All right. With that, guys. Hey, thanks a lot to everybody joining us. Thanks, AJ, for coming back. Uh, LB coming back. Josh is on the couch as usual. Wrestle fan. Everybody in the chat room. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.